wanted to say to people is, I really want people to understand this. Do not give your bully kutta, bully max, gorilla max, this max, that max. They don't need none of this max. Mm -hmm. You don't need to give them that. Natural foods have everything in them. For the bully, you know, their diet, everything, they, they, put it this way, they're easily maintained. You can easily look after them. But if you want to work with them, you've got to train, you've got to work hard with them. It's with anything. You put effort into it, you'll get results. If you don't want to put effort into it, you ain't getting no results. I want to get my dogs to families. Mm -hmm. Families, not people living in apartments, because I've experienced that myself. Mm -hmm. But this breed, it's a giant breed, apartments are, are not good for them. So I prefer someone with land, or if not land, they've got a garden, mm -hmm. and someone who's willing to give them time, someone who's not willing to crossbreed them, someone who's willing to cooperate with me all the time. You know, mm -hmm. the thing is, I don't want, I don't want my dogs going to anybody if they're not going to have no interaction with me. It's like, for example, Sean, I give you a dog. And I'm trying to contact you for weeks and weeks just to see how the dog is. Now, you don't respond to me. I'm going to be like, hold on a minute. Why did I do that? Mm -hmm. Because I want to know, as a breeder, as the forefront of this breed, I want to know how my breed is getting along, how my dogs are getting along. Because I can have that as future reference. Reference, Sorry. You know, so... I want my dogs to end up in good homes, caring people. Not just that, I want them to end up on the show ring. I want these dogs to be able to go into a dog show and say, right, this is a bully kutta. If that means that you have to muzzle your dog and take it, by all means, please, I will push you. I am willing to push people towards showing these dogs. I want the world to know about this breed. I, you know, there's such a misconception about this breed. Mm -hmm. I want people to see the right thing. I want people to have the right direction. So for, for me, to my ideal customer, it has to be love and passion for the breed as well. Not just he's about money, because I've been offered money before for dogs, and I've said, I'll see you later. Breed, it's not about the money. It's nothing to do with the money. It's all about having the right people, the right caring people, you know, who are willing to work with the breed, who are willing to... I don't want people who will... For example, someone says, oh, your dog's no good, mate. I want people to stay quiet because we know what we've got. I don't want people out there, rah, 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 this, that, this, that. Do you know what I mean? Bickering with people. I don't want none of that. I don't want to none, none of that because we've got everything we've got. Sean, I've worked really, really, really hard. And I've, I, I believe me, I've spent thousands on references, books, this, that, you know, just to find out where I stand with this. I've got everything written down. So when they go to their homes, when they, the dog goes to its home, the owners ain't got a problem. There is no problem because I'm there for you. You can ring me 24 hours a day and I'm there for you. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you've got one of my dogs. That dog is not just my dog. That dog it was part of my family. So in a sense, I'm giving you my family. So that would be my ideal home. Like I said to you before, the bully kutta, the frame forms up to three months. Mm -hmm. I can provide a diet. If people are willing to follow it, I'm willing to provide a diet for them. Okay? But the bully kutta, if you're going to start putting too much weight on it, Sean, their legs are going to go. Yeah. Secondly, hard ground. Do not keep them on hard ground. They need soft ground. Mm -hmm. They need soft ground. Maybe after a few generations, then yeah. But with the early dogs, keep them on soft ground. Keep them on, you know, walk them on soft ground. Within, firstly, look at the parents. Mm -hmm. Well, very important. Look at the two, uh, look at the parents. And then from there, make your decision if you want to buy a pup or not. Because if there's faults within the parents, don't even go down that route of getting the pups. Mm -hmm. Because it's more likely to come into the pups. But to 
Cow uh, their frame problem, their bone structure problems is easy. Calcium supplements is a must. Bone meal, if if you want to do that, you can do that. Cod liver oil is also good, but that's only at the early stages of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's it, really. It's just it's, it all depends on don't overfeed. Look, I'll, I'll tell you one thing: when the bully could that reaches nine months old start feeding that dog once a day do not feed that dog twice a day Mm -hmm. and you will see yourself believe it or not if you saw my Roma I mean there's pictures all over the internet of her she was on one meal a day and when I took her to the Pakistan everybody who's seen her said we've never seen a female so big Mm -hmm. and this dog was on one meal a day that will involve the diet as well yeah you know yeah so the diet has to be good as well. No, not don't influence too much carbs in the diet either. Uh huh. Because think of it like this: the way we we are going to look after our bodies, we look after their bodies the same. Mm-hmm. Don't think just because it's a dog, it, it'd be different. No, if we're going to look, if we're going to, if I'm going to put loads of carbs into my body, I'm going to bulk up. Mm-hmm. But if I restrict that, and obviously do my training, I'm not going to be that bulky. I'm not going to have that fat, and you know all that excess body weight mm-hmm. but that's the best thing that's the best thing you can do is do not overfeed them that's it minimize the food i can give you portion types and everything i never weighed it but i can tell you you know how to do it if anyone needs help sean i'm willing to help them when it comes to the bully kutta, i am willing to help them i will not back down as long as they tell me where their dogs come from Mm-hmm. Because then I, I can't. Make, listen, Sean. You can say to me, Imran, I've got this bully kutta. He's eight months old and his legs are wonky, or he's got cow hoo. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say to you, okay, cool. Can I see the parents, please? And you'll be like, Imran, I haven't got pictures of the parents. How can I make a decision on your dog? Because bullies. One thing I've learned even about bullies, genetically, they do pass on things. Mm-hmm. So this is a bust. Always, always. Have I always look at the parents first. Look at the parents first, and then when you get that puppy, the decision is up to you. If you look at my females, look at all my dogs that I've bred. Look at any of them. Look at uh, Laird Ross's Roma and Tula. Now he's followed all the guidelines that I've told him, and you can you you can have a look at his females today. And if you can find me a fault in them, you know. I won't cut my neck off, but yeah, I'll do something. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. this, is, this is what I'm saying. And one other thing I, I'd like to add, actually, I really want to add this, fish. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't get cod liver oil, sardines, they love sardines. You know, even if you used to get a tin of sardine. Two, with two, I don't know in the States what it's like, but we get a little tin here mm-hmm. with like three, three little cut-offs. That is satisfactory enough for them for breakfast. Mm-hmm. So that, I think, is very important as well, fish, sardines. Interesting. Would you be yeah. opposed to a, a closely guided uh, outcrossing um, program? Yes. Yes. Cool. Right. Firstly, Sean, I'm against any crossing of the bully kutta. Mm-hmm. If you want to make it a better dog, if you want to make it whatever, whatever you want to achieve from it, it has got mm-hmm. within within itself. It is present there. You just need to find a way of bringing that out of your dog. Mm-hmm. Secondly, I would never ever advise anyone to cross the BK with any other breed. I'm against it. Mm -hmm. Why am I against it? We've seen it for hundreds of years. We've seen it for decades as well. People crossing breeds. And what's happening is one person does a cross, Sean, someone else will go and pick up on it. Hold on a minute, you've done that. I can do it too. So what tends to happen is it becomes a fashion. But they're a labradoodle. The guy who created it regrets it now. Mm-hmm. He's like, why did I do it? Because what's happened is everyone wants to put their bit in. So for me, personally,
personally, I'm against it. I will never, ever cross the BK. And not just that, all my effort has gone down the drain, isn't it? Mm-hmm. All the headaches, all the effort that I've made, all the money I've spent, you know, it's all gone down the drain. Because why? Someone has decided to cross the dog. Second, thirdly, the thing is, if you're going to get a bully kutta, and then you're going to have problems with that bully kutta, that's the parents, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You should have got good dogs from the start. Why did you fall into their trap? Why did you listen to what they got to say? Why didn't you reach out to someone who can help you? I mean, Sean, I'm not going to benefit of anything. Mm-hmm. If someone brings me up and says, right, I'm buying two bully kutas off Sean. Can you advise me, please? What do you think of his dogs? I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell them straight. Because if I was in that position, I'd like to know the truth. It's not about downgrading anyone's dogs because everyone loves their dogs, no matter how bad they are, no matter how they look. Everybody loves their dogs. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, the truth is the truth, isn't it, Sean? Exactly, yeah. So when it comes to that, I'm not backing down. I mean, I don't go online and I don't like to be a keyboard warrior. If you want to talk to me, you can inbox me. I am willing to help you. Mm -hmm. But if you're one of those rats that comes to me for advice and then goes to the next person and says, hold on a minute, Imran said this about your dogs, Imran said that about your dogs. I don't need people like that around me. Mm You know, so there's always going to be that issue there, Sean. Always going to be. That issue's never going to die out. So if you want good dogs, going back to the subject again, I know I always go off trail, but going back to that subject again, if you want good dogs, make sure you get good pups from the beginning and follow the guideline to bring them pups up. And in the future, you won't need that guideline again because you would have experienced that with your dogs already. When we're talking about this, some bully kutas are braced in such a way that just, genetically their legs are deformed. Genetically, their legs are deformed. Stay away from them, dogs. You're never ever going to get any success, even after you breed them to a good dog. Mm-hmm. Is it just because they are bred just for function and people don't worry about the structure and, and all that? There you go. That's the answer. Yes, 100%. Why is a bullikuta bred? Performance, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's like if one dog has a fight with another dog and he wins, they're going to use that dog to breed. The loser is not going to be bred, is it? They're going to be like, oh, see you later, mate. Mm -hmm. That dog will just stay at home. So that's how it works. Mm -hmm. When they... When they perform with these dogs, what they do, they test them. They don't look at the structure of the body. Mm -hmm. Some do, but not everybody does. And a lot of the times, what happens is, when even if a dog's got shit structure, but the body, I mean, uh, yeah, the structure, and he's a good fighter, they will still use that dog to, to breed. And they put it over silly little females. I mean, you'd be shocked at some of the females that I've seen mm-hmm. that they put them over. But they do it. Why? Because that bloodline. It's all about the bloodline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Give you an example. I watched a video. Someone sent me a link the other day. They said, look, this guy's done history on the BK. And we don't understand it. So can you have a look at it? I said, yeah, cool. No worries. Anyway. So I looked at it and he's, he's talking about, I want to do this with the BK. I contacted this guy contacted him, messaged him, got his number, and I'm, I don't usually go out of my way to do things like that. I said, look, if you want help with the BK, I know you're in Pakistan, I can help you, registry, you know, whatever you want to do, I'll help you. Because what they want to do, the good news, I might as well give it to you now. Because you've asked such a question. I can register the bully kutas. Mm-hmm. I can register the bully kutas with the Pakistan Kennel Club. I've actually set a standard with the WKU. Have you heard of them? Uh Uh-uh. Right, it's World Kennel Union, I'm sure they're known as. I've had them in contact with me. I've actually set that up, the standards being set. I can also issue pedigrees for the bully kutas. But what I need, 
I need to know where your dogs are coming from, don't I? Right. I need right. that line for me to issue you pedigrees. Maybe my pedigree registration, if you want me to go and search, then the registration will cost more, obviously, because resources cost money. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come for free. But as far as I'm concerned, Sean, I don't see anyone out there making effort with the breed to that extent from where I have. I mean, there's been breeders in the UK for what, 10 years, 15 years, 12 years, whatever it is. What have they actually achieved with the bully kutta apart from a market of selling them? Mm -hmm. Have you seen anything? I haven't, and I live in the UK. You know, I've not seen anything. There's no one out there who's thinking of the benefit of the breed for the future of the breed. What people are thinking about is filling up their pockets, right? Trying to get the dogs out there, trying to get my dogs known, and that's it. But it doesn't work like that because you need to think about preserve and protect. That is the whole point of you owning these dogs. Mm -hmm. You know, so as far as I know, there might be a few people in Pakistan. But as far as I know, it's a li you, you can count them on your fingers. Actually, there is a few people, so you can just about count them on one hand that I know of because they're trying to join up with me. And I've told them the rules. I've told them how things work and they're fine with everything with me because I, I, I don't agree with fighting dogs. I don't agree with it at all. And um, obviously for us to get certain dogs, we need to see these dogs fight or they have to be in a fight or whatever, you know, like that. But as far as me fighting dogs or anyone who's going to work with me, I'm not interested. It's all I'm interested in preserving and protecting. And the fighting, because of the fighting, because of the slow fighting, that's why we've got the decline within the ancient type of Bulikutta. Because it is the ancient Asiatic Mastiff. Because it's an old breed, it's from Asia, mm -hmm. and it's a Mastiff. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Ancient Asiatic Mastiff. Yeah. You know, so going to India now. India, I'll be honest with you, I don't, I do, and I don't. There is a few people out there who are looking to better the breed, who are willing to take care of the breed, but I don't know how much they're willing to go or where they're willing to go to, because I, I don't send dogs to India at the moment. I haven't had no dealings with people from India at the moment regarding these, these dogs, you see, because my main aim is Forget the East, let's put them out in the West because we need to realize the cradle of civilization was a mastiff of dogs. You know, we need to wake people up that this breed is not what you think it is. It's not just a fire, it's not just put it in the ring, boom, done. It's not that. There's more to this breed than that. You can use it for protection training, you could use it for any, you name it, Sean. Your options are open for anything, really. It's how you work with the dog. Mm -hmm. It's exactly how you work with the dog. So I hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. I want my dogs to go to America. Believe me, because I know in America we can achieve what we haven't achieved in Europe. We can achieve that in the States. Because, for example, let's go to Texas. You have ranges, you know, you have big farms there. People have livestock. You've got the puma, you've got the wild cats, you've got all sorts. In America, you have a lot of wildlife. Mm -hmm. They, these dogs, will bring another light to them. You know, it, 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 when we see the bully kutta working out, for example, in America, chasing a hog or what, taking on a wolf or taking on a bear, you know, we, we, we will see that eventually because people will do that. They will guard their properties with these dogs one day, won't they? Mm -hmm. Because the market's getting bigger and bigger. I'm happy, Sean, you know what? I've spoken to you. I know this is our second conversation. And I'll be honest with you, I've had a look at your podcasters as well. You know, I've had a look at your Facebook. You're going to think, oh, God, I've got a stalker. But why did I do this? Because I need to know who I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. If I'm dealing with any Tom, Dick and Harry who's going to go and use my work right. for his benefit, I don't need that. But with you, Sean, I'd be happy, happy give you a dog mate mm -hmm. i'd be happy to so i'm willing to work with a team that's willing to cooperate with me 
willing to work with me, willing to set the standards. Even with the dog shows, I'll show them how everything goes. I mean, I was involved in dog shows. I used to think of it as a, how can I put it? It's not a manly thing, put it that way. That's how I used to think of dog shows when I was younger. But my experience from dog shows is, it's been so beneficial within the Bulikuta world. I mean, how would I have known about a standard type dog and a classic type dog? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have even known none of this. Mm -hmm. But like you know, the classic is the closest to it and the standard is more or less a mix Mm -hmm. of that type. Mm You know, so I've learned so much from the dog show and I'd love to get these dogs in the ring. I'd love to get these dogs on an international level. And the thing is, I have not been sitting about, you know, doing nothing because I've actually... Look, I've got I've got a pedigree of my dogs. I'm the only person in the whole world mm-hmm. who's got a PKC, Pakistan Kennel Club registry, I've got the pedigree of my dogs. So I've got Romas, I've got Chingaras, you know, I've got Shola. I've got my dog's pedigree. Why have I got this? Why did I build up this database? Then tomorrow, no one can question me. Where did your dog come from? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got five generations. I've actually even, to this point, Sean, to this point, I've got pictures going back to early 90s, late 90s of my dog. So I've got like five generations going back, you know. So the thing is, you have to, you have to, you have to be on top of these. You can't just, you can't just think the bully kutta, yeah, let's just own the bully kutta because we got bully kutta, we got a big bad dog. No, it's not that because you know what? That bully dog might even shame you up one day Mm -hmm. in the sense that he knows that his master can do more than him. So he just sit back and say, you know what, master, you deal with it. They're very intelligent, very, very intelligent, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's the thing. I would. I'll be honest with you, Sean. If you said to me tomorrow, Imran, source me a pup, I would. I would actually go down that route. But the thing is, I'd rather people wait and then then we do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Instead of me going back on and some people saying, oh, can you go with this? Can you give me that? No, wait. But I'm working on it. What's the point of me working? I'm spending all this money. Even now, I'm going to Pakistan. Why am I going to Pakistan to work on my dogs? Mm-hmm. I'm not going out there just for the sake of it. It's not cheap, you know. So yeah, Ross has got my dogs. Layered Ross. You can add him on Facebook. Yeah, I've got. L-A-I. Yeah, I'm, I'm friends with yeah. him. Yeah. He's got two of my pups. A genuine guy, any advice I've given him from day one, Sean, he's followed it. And the proof's in the pudding, like they say, and it's in front of you. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, Pula, his girl, is a exact copy of her granddad. Copy of her granddad, right? Roma is a exact copy of her mum. This is how the bully kutta should. You know, like when the Rottweiler produces... For example, I know about, I mentioned the Rottweiler a lot because I know a lot about the Rottweiler and I used to see a lot of the breedings going on with a younger age within that breed. So obviously it was purity to purity. But what I noticed was that, you know, some have the longer muzzle and a shorter muzzle. Yeah. Same thing with the BK. Look at Roma and look at Tula. They're the same litter. Roma's gone more to her mum's side. And Tula's gone more to her granddad's side, but they're still old type Bulikutas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's maybe, I'll be honest with you, there's maybe a 5 to 10% if that weakness in there. But how are you going to, the only way of flushing that out is me putting another Bulikuta, pure one, mm-hmm. on top of the girls, and that's it. It's pure because I've got pure now. I've got hundred percent pure bully kutas on the ground now. I've got two females. Sorry, I've got three females. They're on the ground. And a lot of people in Pakistan, they will fob females off. They're not interested in females because they can't fight, but I'm interested in females. They always say in it, a true dog's man, a dog's man's foundation is always a foundation female. Mm-hmm. You know, we we, we we know this that you know. If the female is good, 
you know, we get good dogs from that. And I've experienced this in my life as well, that when you produce from a good female, you get good dogs. Because I produce from my American Bulldog female, and oh my God, I've got grand champion American Bulldogs. Mm-hmm. In the show, my Lopez, I'd like you to add this actually, my grand, my Lopez was grand champion American Bulldog for about four years running in the United Kingdom in the early 2000s. Um, I had other dogs that would come first and second. All her litters, um, even Dave Putnam himself, judged Roma and said, what an excellent specimen. Judges from Germany, I can't remember the kennel's names now, they even wanted to take that dog off me. It was funny because the judge was kind of drunk that day and he was like, I want that dog, I'm taking that dog. I didn't even understand what he was talking about because it was German, (laughs) wasn't it? When I found out afterwards... Because they gave second place to my dog. She was a bit older then, you know, so obviously it's understandable. He was fuming. He's like, how dare they do that? How dare they do that? I said, oh, leave it. But when Dave Putnam even saw her, the author of The Working American Bulldog, he was like, wow, mate, you've done a really good job. I want people who've got a passion to preserve and protect the breed. Mm Mm-hmm. Ask for advice. Don't be shy. Don't think you know it all. I'm willing to go all the way. And you know what, Sean? I swear I'll tell you straight up, brother. If you ever need to go down that route of getting a BK, let me know. I will. And then we get down to business. Absolutely. But, yeah, it's been lovely talking to you. I'll yeah. leave you to it then, my friend. Yep. And I'll, uh, we'll be in contact. Cheers, Sean. You take care. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.